welcome to another Cinemondo podcast edition with Kathy. Burke is not with us today. He's a little under the <laughs> weather. But we have a special guest, uh, writer Dana Hammer. Hi, Dana. Hi. <laughs> Great to Women have you. Women of horror. I love it. <laughs> yes. So much. We're, we're big horror fans. So I, I, I just a little back. So first, please, please like, uh, comment, and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. We really appreciate that and uh, all those comments. We read every one and we respond. So uh, thanks for doing <laughs> that. But let me do a little backstory. Why uh, I wanted to have Dana on the show is um, a couple years ago, there's a great little uh, film festival in North Hollywood. I think it's North Hollywood called the Boobs and Blood Film Festival. <laughs> and I had a short film in 2018 called Breathe and it got in there and I was lucky enough to win a bo- the best short script. I won a little award. And uh, right after that, Dana won- came up and won for her sc- feature script. And I think she won maybe another 25 awards that night, something <laughs> like that. She kept going up, right? Is that true? Uh, I think I won two awards. I won uh, oh, okay. <laughs> And then best feature screenplay. I think that's right. what it was. Okay. That was a fun festival. It's one where you know, D. Yeah. Wallace was there and Vernon Wells, and, and it's just sort of like this fun group. And um, I, I enjoyed myself. So I, I, I saw, I, I, I recognized. I said, I'm gonna just kind of watch Dana. So I kind of just checked out her website and her Facebook page, and and she has a lot of stuff going on. She's a writer who's written not only <laughs> scripts but short stories, novels, plays, and she gets some of these produced. And as somebody that has tries to write himself, you know, uh, when we're not working, it's it's a challenge to do that. So I wanted to kind of delve into that and how, first of all, how you got started with writing and how your career is going. And I know it's it's tough to make it in this business, so I think it's interesting to hear from, from your, your side of things. Big question. Um, well, I know, I know, I know. Um, it is a big question. Um, so I, I've always <laughs> written little things off and on like my whole life. Um, but for a while I worked in finance and it was really a bad choice for my personality type. Um, mm. not, not a great fit for me. So by the end I was just so burned out and done. Um, I just sat at my desk and wrote a novel when I was supposed to be working <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I realized, you know, what am I even doing? This is making me miserable and it's, um awful so I quit and uh for a while I taught yoga and wrote but then after I had my daughter I um devoted myself to writing full time wow that's great you know it's uh it does a great I did the same thing sort of like I had a job that I hated in television in fact I met Kathy and Burke uh, uh working in Atlanta at CNN and Turner forever <laughs> ago uh, but then I moved on to New York and I just, I don't like doing this. So I just, you know, I was miserable too. Like I would try to stretch 45 minutes of work into an eight hour day. You know, that's the kind of job yep. I had. So I left and did something else and it's, there's different kinds of stress and obviously becoming a full-time writer. I think the stress is, okay, you write all this stuff, then how do you get it read and get it yeah. noticed? You know, yeah. how do you break through? Like you have all these ideas, you're writing your stories. Like who do you contact? Like, how do you get out into the world published? Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, uh, that's a secret. I'm not telling <laughs> anyone. Um, so I still have things that I'm trying to get out there that, you know, keep getting rejected. A lot of it is serendipity. Um, mm-hmm. And just like being okay with rejection and submitting anyway. Yeah. Um, cause eventually you'll find your audience and eventually you'll find your people. Um, it's just a matter of sticking with it, honestly, and continuing to improve and continuing to write while you're being rejected. I always think of Stephen <laughs> King talking about how he, all his you know, first story, Carrie was turned down by every publishing house. Like the fact that Stephen King was rejected over and over again, and then his wife submitted it to some random whoever it was and they were like we'll take it and it was like there yeah. it was you just never know like you said if you just keep trying persistence i think really is half the battle it is because a lot of people do give up and it, you know it's hard but rejection sucks but it's just it part of the game and it hurts and you know you just kind of got to so why do you think you're drawn to horror I, I love meeting women who love horror because even though there are a lot of them they're still when I meet someone like that, I feel like, oh, my people, you know, so it's always like a nice surprise to meet another woman who likes horror. And I'm always interested in how you what drew you to that? Um, you know, I've always watched it. And a lot of it came from my mom. Um, when I was little, my mom probably wasn't the best parenting choice, but like we would stay up late and watch. I don't know if you remember like um, 
Up All Night with Gilbert Gottfried and like sure. some of these uh, Tales from the Dark Side. There was yeah. all these shows that were on late at night that were horror, like kind of campy B horror. Yeah. And I watched them all the time growing up. Like it never, never occurred to me that that was weird, but it kind of was. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that's what really got me into it, I think, in the first place. And I don't know, I think women... Um, women are kind of uniquely positioned to appreciate horror in a way that I think that mm -hmm. uh, men maybe are not because, you know, we know what it is to be hunted, right? We know yeah. what it is to be told that we're crazy when we know the thing that's happening is happening. Mm -hmm. um, I think most women have experienced some kind of horror in their lives. And I think that yeah. that makes us um, a little bit better at appreciating the psychological nuances of it. Not that men have ever or a lot of men have, but I think, um, sure. but uh, yeah. I think for women, it's like a daily um, subconscious mindset of like, when you walk out your door, you have to kind of assess. It's almost just automatic now instinct, look around, make sure, because, you know, it, that's just normal for us to have to worry about parking in a parking lot at night or walking down a lonely hallway. Like, I don't think most men worry that much about that. You know, it's like, I'm even walking my dogs at night. I think about it. My husband's just like, there's some creepy guy up there. And I'm like, I'm going to turn it right here. He goes, no, we're just going to walk right through. I'm like, no, <laughs> everything in my being is saying, do not do this because I understand right. what it is. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think you're right. I think horror, we have a whole different um, instinct about what horror is. And that's why I'm really interested in how women approach horror because it's, it really is from like a deeper, more visceral place. And I love, you know, I love slasher movies. I love men's horror, whatever that is, <laughs> but you know, Women have a whole different mindset when it comes to this stuff. And I'm always fascinated by it. Me too. Well, I, I was just, it's interesting, Dana, that you said that, you know, your mom, you, you watched Up All Night. I mean, this I know Kathy can totally relate to that. Because, <laughs> totally. My parents were exactly the same. Yeah, tell her. Tell watching, her. Like, Hammer the, the, films. Like, we were... <laughs> we would just watch horror all the time i remember watching like the the head that wouldn't die and the guy with his arm torn off i remember specifically saying wow that's pretty crazy and then there's a little kid my friends not being able to watch that like like you, you right. can't watch this stuff what and then one day <laughs> my parents went we're gonna go see last house on the left i was like teeny i was like Look, yeah this will be fun you love ghosts i'm sure it's a ghost story <laughs> so here they so we go up to the box office and the woman's like i don't think you should take kids into this movie they're like i'll take my kids to any damn movie yeah. so we go in there and the same thing like parents what in the hell <laughs> <laughs> I that movie scarred me of course you know it, nothing changed i think yeah, yeah I mean, it was too real that was like the horror of like something's wrong with these filmmakers <laughs> it's like they're just sick people it's a good movie, and though. they turned out to be great oh, it's it a great is a good what's craven it? who yeah. knew he had yeah. that in him that's insane. Yeah. So yeah, I totally relate to the idea of you just grew up taking for granted you got to see Hammer films. And I love your name, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think that's really funny. I wonder if that's the case with a lot of women in horrors. You know, you're just raised with it. It's just, it's just fun. Yeah, it doesn't seem weird to you. Like, <laughs> So what do you think is, as you approach horror, and I, I haven't read your novels yet, but I'm going to now that I know what they are. <laughs> Um, what, what, a what, a what attracts you to the certain kind of horror that you like? Like, what do you prefer to kind of write about your perspective? Um, I'm a big fan of horror comedy and body horror. Mm -hmm. Um, really anything kind of the wacky campier stuff. I really enjoy that. Um, I think that horror and comedy really are two sides of the same coin. Um, it's really just asking yourself, what if? And yeah, I think, that's and that's what I really like in my, in my films. I like, I like people who are always asking what if, and then coming up with weird answers to that. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and answers just, that are interesting and unique yeah. because I hate when I'm in like watching a film and you're kind of in the mere mind predicting what's going to happen and your, your idea is always better or you've already predicted it. I like the one that kind of surprises you. <laughs> right. Are there sure. horror comedies that stick out? I mean, I think of Shaun of the Dead or think of some other ones. Are there mm -hmm. stuff that you go, this one really just like worked? Because it's tough to pull that off. It's tough to be, because I think horror comedy should also have gore and scares along mm -hmm. with laughs. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's too much skewed one way or the other, it doesn't work as well, at least for me. Um, are there certain films that you go, that one, that one just really hit it right? Um, I'm going to say Bride of Chucky. 
<laughs> I think oh, that okay. one really nailed. Like it, it's it's yeah. a really good balance of laughs and um, Zombievers is pretty good. I like Zombievers. Oh yeah, lot. Zombievers. Yep. Um, yep. Well, Jennifer uh, Tilly's great in Bride of Chucky. You know, she really she's fantastic. I love yeah, her. <laughs> and I think they're doing a series now. Yeah, they are. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, there's a Chucky series. And mm-hmm. she's the star, I believe. <laughs> she's in it. I think it's on Peacock or something like that. Week. I know, right? More Chucky! <laughs> Is it out yet? Uh, I just read something. It's either out or it's just coming out very soon. So. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. She's like, <laughs> how do I find it? Right, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, I can like, listen to this right now. Like, I know. Like, we need to go. We need to watch Chucky. Bye. <laughs> nice talking to you, Danny. <laughs> Um, Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, and but going back to women in horror, like there's not a lot of now female uh, directors that are you know doing horror films, and some yeah. of them are just. I mean, we know this Jennifer Kent and June DeCorno and other ones, and they really just uh, they're. In, uh, it's just great to see that side of it yeah. because it's just. Um, yeah, it's a different type of horror film, but even for a guy to watch it, it's incredibly scary and incredibly mm-hmm. well made. So it's just nice to see finally more and more women getting out there and getting to make the movies they want to make. And a lot of them, they're writing those scripts too, you know, so. Yep. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's nice. So how did, so, so what drew you to the horror film you're making? The Red Wings or Red um, Wings? Is it the Red Wings? Red yeah. Wings. So uh, that was the first screenplay I ever wrote. Um, I wrote it in three days and I, we'll it, I wrote it mostly. So <laughs> my friend and producer, Rihanna Nairns, uh, mentioned to me at one point that she wanted to make a movie about killer tampons. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, I was like, <laughs> Hey, you know what I want to do? <laughs> <laughs> right. And so um, I was actually at a writer's retreat um, with some of my friends and they're like novelist, short story writers. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to try writing a screenplay. I'm just going to see if I can do it. So I got, the final draft mobile. And I was like, I'm just going to see. And I sat down and it was so much fun. And I thought, you know, (laughs) I can do this. And I wrote, and I thought the idea of someone whose tampons turn into murdering bats and, you know, she uses them to get vengeance on people. I mean, it was just so over the top and wacky that I wasn't really taking it seriously at first. I was just having fun. And then by the time I was done with it, I'm like, you know what? Like, this is ridiculous, but it's actually really good. And I liked (laughs) it a lot. I started submitting it and um, it won a bunch of awards. And my friend, uh, Rhiannon, who's the producer on it, is she's she's a good hustler. She's good at finding people and bringing them together and um, getting people to do things. And then we met um, Kate, Kate Kroll, who's the director, and she's fantastic. And um yeah, together they started making things happen, and then EMA Films came on board, and they bought it up, and now it's uh, in pre-production. We've got some actors interested in being in it, and yeah, so it'll be, it's going to be That's good. That's amazing. Congratulations. Do you have a director? Are you directing it, or do you have a director? Oh, no, um, Kate Kroll <laughs> is the director. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, no, uh, that's... Uh... No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, I've never directed. <laughs> or anything i've only ever directed one short film and that was just to see if i could do it and now that's in post so we'll see what happens with that hey you've never written a script before so you know yeah (laughs) i just gotta do it right (laughs) well i think going from a novel or short story to writing a script i mean thank god for final draft because that was always stopping me just the you know the tabs and the the spacing and now it's just you know with two keys you can basically write a script so that kind of goes away and it's very freeing. It's a different way of writing. I, I've only written scripts. I think it would be hard for me to sit down and write a short story or a novel. It's just a different thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to get that, to, to write you know, a script and then having someone champion, champion for you and getting it out there yeah. and saying, hey, you know, read this. It's a really good script that's won these awards, blah, blah, blah. And then you start getting some heat. Right. And that's just so exciting. It's like now you're in this pre-production, like actors are interested. This might actually be made into a movie that we can, you know, stream and watch, you know. And Now it's and, the dream. And it's a great title, too. Like, did, yeah. did you think of the <laughs> title? Like, after she gave I, you that uh, idea. Okay. No. Who came um, up with that? With the title, Rhiannon did. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did you have a working title for the script that was, or just whatever? You know, uh, I just like, called it Killer Tampon Bats or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it was just like, it wasn't going to be the real title. It was just... Right, right, right. Just the working title. <laughs> That's yeah. really funny. 
But then you've written other scripts since then. I mean, first of all, let me just say, you know, I can't stand spiders. So I just read your short story before called Spider. Right before, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, you really went to the, you know, went to the <laughs> core of my, you know, early childhood scare. You know, I, I ran into a black widow spider bed when I was like five or six and that scarred oh. me, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> and was, but I love the body horror. I love, that was a great short story. And I read it, you know, real quickly. So, yeah, I think just be able to go from plays to scripts to novels to short stories. Yeah. You're a real writer. You know, that's obviously what you are. You know, and uh, I love, I just, I'm very happy that you're making a movie. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Do you know when that's going to be shot? Is that is that something, I know pre-production can always, can go on forever and this and that. And it's just, it's, I guess it's about getting funding and, make, you know, getting the money to make it, right? Exactly. Um, I think we're still working on getting like the final funding in place. We already have um, quite a bit in place, but not all of it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not 100% sure when they're going to begin filming. Right. Will it be here? And will it be in Los Angeles or somewhere else? I think you know? there was some discussion of maybe doing it in uh, Toronto or Montreal, but mm -hmm. there was also some discussion of doing it in LA. So okay. I don't, yeah. um, I don't get to make that choice. But uh, right. I hope they do it in LA. That way, I can show up and just you know pester everyone and watch. And <laughs> It's like well, the writers here. I know. You know, the writer on the set is like, you know, just, just go out, sit in the corner. We'll take care of it. That's kind of like the attitude. Yeah. At least that wasn't no, old Hollywood. Do anything. What's that? I, I doubt they'll let me do it. I no. doubt they'll oh, yeah. let me do anything, but I still want to watch. Like, <laughs> yeah, you want to be part of it. Of it course. Be. Of course. It is funny. I think this came out. Of quietly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, here's this thing that came out of your head and people are going to take it and go away and do their thing with it. And you're like, wait, this is my idea. <laughs> What yeah. are you doing? But at the same time, it'd be kind of magical to see it happen. I think so. Yeah. It'll be really cool. It, do you find going back to, uh, have you, so you've written other scripts after Red Wings, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Was that, were they, think, I mean, like, because Red Wings was just sort of a crazy idea. You, you, you wrote it in three days. It sort of just came right out of you and it came out good. Is that, uh, that's not always the case with script writing. And some of the other scripts were like, mm -hmm. you have an idea and then it just, it's kind of a, it's a struggle for it to work uh, or you don't know the ending and you know this kind of stuff how do you pad it out to a feature length i'm sure you know it that's happened to you before because that happens to me you know all the time yeah how do you yeah. deal with that yeah how do you deal with the writer's um, block well sometimes it's just a matter of it's a trickier plot and um right. and i find that and if it and if it takes longer than three days all of my other scripts have taken longer than three days with the exception of um, a play I wrote that took about three days. Um, but, and it's okay if it takes a little bit longer, but I find that sometimes if I'm struggling to get it out, it's because it's just not that good. Um, mm -hmm. It's because I'm not, I'm not as engaged with it as I should be, or it's not as exciting as it should be, or something's just off with it. And that's why I'm not able to write it quickly. Um, right. I find that if it's good, I can just cook along and, and spew it all out. But it's, it's when there's problems with it that it takes me a long time. At least that's me. Um, I know some writers, that's just their process. That they, you know, they like to do it painstakingly. They make, like to make sure everything's perfect as they go. Mm -hmm. I'm not like that. I'm the kind of person who likes to spew it all out and edit later. Um, <laughs> right. But, um, yeah. yeah, so pretty much what I do is I try and power through and finish it, even if it's bad. Um, but sometimes... You just have to admit defeat and say this just isn't a good <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's no, you, you cut your losses and go, hey, this you know, you gave yeah. it a shot. I did it. <laughs> it's a waste of a few weeks and I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but you're still but you're still writing. That's that's the thing. It's like yeah. If yeah. you keep the muscle working, then even if that one doesn't work out, you put it away and who knows, maybe you write something else and you go, oh, This might be better this might be good for my you know, so you go back and forth and somehow it works out. Do you have a go-to person, after, whether it's your husband or somebody else, that reads the scripts, your first reader, to sort of, you know, go through it? Or do you, or a um, writer's group? Yeah, so my husband has actually never read anything I've written at all. <laughs> it's okay, none um, of our spouses watch the podcast. Exactly. Day, so, you know, yeah. They're so is. not interested. You know. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's interesting, because if he wrote something, I would read every word. But Oh, Totally. Know. <laughs> I know. Take that. <laughs> I hope he's yeah. watching. Oh, he won't be. So you can say whatever you want. <laughs> I can say whatever I want about him. Oh. <laughs> it's like, I know a cannibal. I wonder if they know each other. <laughs> yeah, you know. 
Uh, no, uh, so it's funny. actually fine because he doesn't want to be, he says that there's no winning. Like if he compliments it, I won't believe him. And if he criticizes uh -huh. it, I'll get upset. So I'm like, that's actually fair. Um, that's <laughs> so um, right now I'm in a couple of writers groups. Um, one is uh, for novels and short stories and one is for screenplays and stage plays. Um, mm. I actually am the organizer of the one for screenplays and stage plays. And that's been really helpful because we do like table reads basically. And we take that's turns cool. reading each other's stuff out loud and you can invite other people. And it's actually a good time. Um, my friend Joanna is like probably my favorite beta reader because she gives really good feedback and she has a really good um, understanding of what makes for like compelling viewing. So she's kind of like my go-to person right now. Um, but yeah, writers groups are helpful, except when they're not. <laughs> I've been I've been in yeah. a couple. One was just kind of a nightmare. I mean, it was just uh, it's hard to explain. Either people were just very very nice, not giving any good notes. They're saying, "Oh, this is really great," or yeah. there's this tension and there's yelling and there's like you know all, yelling. All the, oh god, this one was just crazy. as I said. I can't you know I can't do it. So I've just sort of backed away, and I have one or two people that I go, "Please read my script," and I trust your judgment. Uh, but I think doing that sort of, I'm sure you're doing it via Zoom or it used to be live or whatever, being in the same room reading the stuff is just very helpful because then you go, oh, it yeah, that, that dialogue doesn't work, you know, or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. it very helps true. a lot to hear it out loud, especially with scripts. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That would be and kind of fun I, just to be part of, I think. It is. And like um, with the script, with the script group like i picked the people so i, I these are people mm. i know i trust um right. they're people who get along for the most part you know what i mean um there's no tension or issues i have been in um groups where there's been some weird tensions and that can be <laughs> awkward but um yeah. as long as you're with the <laughs> right kinds of people they're yeah helpful yeah. yeah, and just being open to the criticism or the suggestions or the notes. And sometimes people aren't the greatest at delivering the note, even if it's good. So I guess it's <laughs> it's always that tightrope walk, <laughs> like your husband says. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> yeah. That's very true. So do you have uh, yeah. any other projects percolating that aren't horror, or is horror your main focus? I'm actually right now writing a middle grade novel. It's, it is yeah. horror though, but it's like, okay. um, but it's YA. for kids. So it's kind of, um, uh, it's not super graphic, but it's ba basically about a boy who's a werewolf and his mom keeps him like away from society because she wants to protect people from his jaws or whatever. Um, there's going to be some twists in it, some interesting, uh, developments, but I, um, that's kind of what I'm working on now. Um, I have a sci-fi screenplay, sci-fi comedy, horror I guess is what you'd call it, that I'm really wanting to get out. <laughs> I'm really proud of it. Um, and so it's one that I'm I'm hoping will get some traction um, called Marshmallows. So we'll see if anyone uh, shows interest in that one. <laughs> Do you have an agent? Do you have people, you know, advocating for you? That kind I don't of have official... an agent. That would be nice. Okay. I don't even know how to get like, I know I was gonna number the join the club. Like, how do you get an agent? You know, for, for those out there wanting, it's like we don't know. <laughs> we well, I, mean, I feel like yeah, I feel like that's I, a thing that people need, but I don't know. Like, do I just go like on the internet and find one and be like, hey, I don't, I don't know. I've, like, uh, I'll save you the trouble. I mean, I've tried and agents are really, they're there to sort of close the deal. You know, what? Yeah. so it's like they're, they come in at the at the last minute and sort of seal the deal and, and, and make that. But the work to get there would be done by maybe a, a manager and there's, there are managers out there, but they're also hard to find and you never know. I've, I have a, fr a writer friend and her manager is a nightmare, you know? So it's mm. like, it's just not, it's, she, he, she, he, she said, don't get a manager, just make your own movie. Try somehow make a movie. If you make a movie, yeah. whether it's a short or a feature, then you're going to, and it gets distributed, then you start getting heat and then people will come to you. Da oh, Dana wrote that film. Okay. I want to be, her agent or her manager right. that's kind of the, re the reality of it you know because any manager you find on you know through google might not be worth much you know but they might they'll still want yeah. their money you know so um you know um oh we lost kathy i don't know what happened to her but um it's just gonna be you and me dana for a while okay <laughs> um uh, hold on there a I am. okay there you are all right um 
and uh, so, but it's, I think by you doing the right thing, trying to getting a film made, get that done. And then, then you can, then you have all yeah. this backlog of work. You can go, oh, yeah, I have this yeah. sci-fi script that I, marshmallows. I love you have a book coming out, a cannibal's guide to fasting, yeah. which is, I love that title. Yeah. It's great. So Thank good. You. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I wasn't proud of that. I'm really bad at coming up with titles. I always ask other people to title my stuff for me, but I came up with that one. That's excellent. That can just give, begs to be read. It's yeah, like, oh, I got to read this. Can you, give us a little, is, uh, can you give us a little taste of what this is about and when it's coming uh, out? Yeah, so it's coming out uh, September 7th, uh, 2022. That's mm -hmm. the date, the projected date right now. Um, it is about uh, a world where there's viral cannibalism. And my protagonist's name is Igor. And he's like six foot seven tall. He's a bodybuilder. He's got a giant spider tattooed on his face. And he's like really, really scary. But he's also a total teddy bear and has a heart of gold. And he's a scientific genius. And he's trying to come up with a cure for viral cannibalism. Um, he himself is a reformed cannibal. So in this <laughs> world, um, basically they're treated like drug addicts. We take cannibals and we send them to rehab where they learn how to wean themselves off of human meat. <laughs> they learn how to like, avoid human meat. Um, and then they're sent to these um, containment centers, which are basically trailer parks. And everyone, all these cannibals live in the trailer parks. They have social workers who check up on them. And um, so Igor is living in one of these containment centers. And then he finds out that his brother has started a cannibal rights cult um, where they're saying that, you know, cannibalism is their choice. They should be free to do what they choose. The government shouldn't be regulating them. And um, at first, it seems like it's okay because they're just like uh, grave robbing and like donating fingers and things to each other. So it's all consensual, um, if a bit creepy. But then he finds out that they're kidnapping homeless children. And so now he's got to intervene and stop his brother's cannibal cult. Come on, wow. cannibals. What up, man? You know, <laughs> have that's, some class. <laughs> that screams to be a movie, though. Would you ever consider, like, if you know, if that got some uh, juice, like, oh, I, you know, do a, a adapt it into a screen uh, into a screenplay? I would love to do that. And in fact, I, I wrote a episode thinking it might be a fun limited series, but oh yeah, I don't think that. Um, I don't think it was a success. I think that maybe you're right. Maybe like a feature film would be better. Um, but uh, yeah, I would love that. That's really cool. Igor fun. needs to be played by like Dwayne the Rock Johnson or, some, or like Michael, <laughs> or what's his name? Like John Cena, somebody like that. Oh, the that guy. would be funny. Someone yeah. super likable, also. <laughs> yeah. John, uh, the Dave Bautista, you know, he, he's another <laughs> big, big Hulk of a guy. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah, someone who's just inherently likable, except he's sort of not likable yeah. anymore. But and I think he's, I actually, say he's a real he's a real cannibal, Chris Pratt. That's what I've heard. <laughs> he's a real cannibal. So that's what <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need an actual cannibal in this film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, love I love that. That, that would be. <laughs> we need more horror out there. We need more horror on TV. I mean, I feel I feel like I see the horror and the horror comedy, and it's so rare that they do it well. And, you know, it's like, like, I love Love and Monsters. I thought was great. It's a little more sci-fi comedy, but just such a great fine line of great effects and horror, but this really fun humor, I'm very grounded. It's like, so when I hear these ideas, I'm like, oh, I want this out there. <laughs> I really want this out there. It would be so yeah. good. It would be really well, fun. Well, all of these ideas, you know, going through all your stories, I mean, these are all sort of very marketable, you know, things that could be turned into TV shows or movies, uh, you know, so it's yeah. like there's all wealth. So I think for you, I mean, this is the dream is like you get something made and then they go, OK, you're, you're not a are you one trick pony? What else do you have? And you go, oh, yeah. here, take a look at my here's some more. Here's my scripts. Here's my, you know, and yeah. just like. Yeah. The stuff has already been done, and then you just go out there and, uh, you know, get it. You know, you, you, the fruits of your labor start to pay off. Right. That's I guess the, the hardest part is <laughs> getting the foot in the door, right? Just once you get the foot in the door, I feel like then you kind yeah. of you're part of the club. It's just that, you know, that's where I'm like, do managers or agents do this, or can yeah. you do this just as a complete independent? And I feel like now with all this technology and, you know, everyone's able to sort of do this on their own now. I feel like there's a lot more opportunity. So it's very cool to see indie films happening like this without yeah. all of the, you know, specific movie making machinery that seems to block people. So it's good to hear it's getting done. Yeah, there's, it's definitely easier to make connections now, I think, than it's mm -hmm. been in the past. Yeah, definitely. Well, it happened, you know, we had a... Um, 
uh, director, writer of from Ireland on, they, he had a movie called Winifred Meeks, and he liked one of my scripts. It's also a horror comedy, and he wants to do an over in Ireland. But it, we're at the point where, and he has a distribution deal, but it's coming up with the initial money. So money. I don't, I don't <laughs> have that Rian, that friend say, I can go out there and, and you know, I, that work, that world is like, you know, how do you come up with a couple hundred thousand dollars to make a low budget feature? I have no yes. idea. It's I don't know how it works. You know, it's just right? so talk about it finance. It's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, I can't do the crowdfunding. I would just be so uncomfortable doing that. The dream kind of is stuff. to win yeah. the lottery and just fund everyone's <laughs> And wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> oh my God. Well, that's I mean, part of like, I... uh -oh. yeah. We're oh, all we frozen. <laughs> oh, we're all, we were all frozen there for a second. Yeah. I think there was a little <laughs> technological geek. Oh. But yes, it's like that money seems to be the hardest part of this whole business because, you know, creative people aren't. And, you know, like you, you did not like the finance world. <laughs> You're like out of here. It's like I, I am not a good money person. I can produce and create, but I don't know how to do the money at all. So that's why you need those people. <laughs> need yeah. them so bad. Unfortunately, that is sort of yep. what makes it happen. Well, and even like asking for money is hard. Like, I think mm -hmm. like, like just knowing who to ask and knowing how to ask and like packaging it and presenting it like that stuff is just it's it's yeah. really hard for me so i'm fortunate that i have uh friends who have those skills <laughs> that's huge that's massive yeah like putting together a pitch deck yeah. or being able to pitch your ideas like if you know if somebody said okay pitch your ideas i had i went to a pitch fest in burbank a couple <laughs> a years ago fest. yeah where you go and you, i had like three or four scripts and i would go i don't know if you're familiar with these it was called the great american pitch fest it's in burbank <laughs> And you go and you go in front of these people uh, who were, are either interns or maybe actually they have their own little production company. And you have three minutes to pitch your script, pitch your idea. And they just look at you stone faced. And either they go, um, no, no, thank you. You know, like uh, or, they, <laughs> no, or, they're, or, or they're interested. Yeah, I, we did one where I, that my, my script Long in the Tooth is about a group of senior citizens uh, take an experimental drug and turn into vampires. And huh? I told that to this one, this older guy. And he goes. Nobody wants a pharmaceutical thriller. Next. <laughs> you know, like, that's kind of not what it is, but, you know, he just. He <laughs> hey, at least he was fast. <laughs> it was yeah, a quick exactly. decision. Have you ever yeah. seen that YouTube channel, Screen Rant, where he does the pitch meetings? Like, it's a comedy where he, what's well, basically a comedy, but where he, he plays the, the, like, studio executive, whether it's Netflix or whoever, and then he'll pitch a script of a movie that's out now, but how the pitch meeting might have gone. Oh, my God, it's so good. Like they'll, he'll just mention things that are obviously problems in the script. What's that and he'll called? Be like, that it's, it's really good. It's called, it's a guy named Screen Rant. And it, he just, if you just look for pitch meeting, say anything pitch meeting, you'll find all his videos. They have these big eyes. But I love that because it is played for comedy, but I don't think it's that far off. <laughs> You know, and of course, the student executives are kind of douchey. Right. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> but when people try and point out the realities of problems in the script, he'll be like, no, that's good. That's tight. It's really funny. and But I watch it. I go, I, I got to learn from this. I think I could learn from this. <laughs> this is probably real. Right. Uh, especially if the movies are bad. It's fun to hear the pitch meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just pitching another YouTube channel. Have fun. Thanks, Some Screen Rant. <laughs> Well, what We're else? So you you have your sci-fi, and are you writing anything currently? Oh, you're writing. That's right. You're writing the YA uh, thing. Uh, question yeah. about that: Like, how do you sort of tone down yeah. your maybe your, um, your, uh, your 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 maybe your th you know your ability to write something that would be for like a a, te a teenager or a YA? How do you sort Not of back off? Not for people off? that had parents like us. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we actually has parents who who care about their kids. Right. <laughs> right this is for like my kid <laughs> um, no, yeah this, exactly um, so <laughs> so i take out all of the fucking um i take out all of the uh um, bad words <laughs> um and then i just kind of uh try and tone down the violence oh okay. i think you can still have something that's scary without that because um yeah. I don't know if I should give away the spoiler, but with this, it's going to turn out that he's not a werewolf. Is it's a Munchausen by proxy situation? Oh. So, um, that's almost so more tragic. she's basically keeping her son captive, and she's fed him this story oh. for his whole life. And so, it's more like a psychological horror. That's um, that's that's good. And I think that that's that could be a movie. 
<laughs> it's dark for kids, but I think like it's I, I've taken out enough of the objectionable stuff. I think that parents will still let their kids read it. Mm. Right. Ideally. <laughs> Yeah, but so you wrote it with all the bells and whistles in there, oh, yeah. and, and then you just went ahead and edited it out, basically. Took out all the fun stuff. Yeah, I just kind of bogleerized <laughs> it a little bit, like right. right. Yeah, you know. Um, well, I, it, it's a challenge for me because I tend, I do have a foul mouth, and I do like violence, and I do like sex. So um, it's a challenge for me to write without that stuff but i think it's actually kind of a fun exercise and um it's it's interesting to see how scary you can make something without that yeah right so have you have you um had to deal with any unique challenges just being a woman in this business or in the business of horror or filmmaking that that you've noticed um yet <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good i will say that a lot it's of festivals I do are very, <laughs> um they're very like um male dominated a lot of times especially in the genre world um mm. but i i haven't been treated badly or anything I, um, that's great like it's definitely sometimes obvious that i'm one of you know three women in the room but uh <laughs> but no so far so good i mean hey, I at least you're in the room scandalous fun story to tell you but <laughs> now, yeah. come on man <laughs> no i just you know you hear about it um you know i we we know karen coleman who runs this the future film is female and she's it's sort of this organization that gives uh indie films maybe you should talk to them um you know gives them money to get projects going when they're you know created by women um and you know that's the sort of thing that you know uh i think is necessary because i think a lot of women do get kind of like like you said you're the woman in the room but you're still like maybe one or two in this room full of guys um they do need a little extra push i think so i'm glad that that's happening and that people are aware and the fact you're in the room at all is already an improvement because you know that has not been the norm <laughs> so yeah. i'm always very excited to see women in this business doing that because it's so hard i mean i wish i could do it i don't even have the nerve to do it <laughs> i keep trying to get bold to try it but I'm you behind were, the scenes. Kathy, you wrote a script years ago. I, yeah, I, I wrote a few scripts and one kind of yeah, a little ways, but it, it was like the one script and I felt like, oh my God, it was so hard and laborious. And this is before all the software and everything else. And it was like, ah, it just kind of wore me out. I don't know if yeah. writing is, my, I mean, I have ideas, but I don't know if writing is the, is my format. Like it's, it feels like a struggle instead of like, oh, it's what I'm born to do, you know? So I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's make this about me now um <laughs> but yes women women in horror <laughs> yeah. do you have any horror films that, that you like especially like you've mentioned a few comedy horror is there anything that um is especially inspiring for stuff you're doing now that isn't necessarily comedy horror like filmmakers oh, or there's the horror films that i love um i really like the bad seed it's like a classic mm, black sure. and white yes um horror film that like you really anything with an evil child in it I'm all about um <laughs> Chucky. i like uh, anime <laughs> dolls like that 80s movie mm. where, uh, and yeah and like killer dolls chucky child's play all those movies <laughs> That's really funny um nightmare on elm street i like a lot of the classic stuff yeah yeah it is it was the heyday really. right it was it think was. about it has your wow. has your attitude toward them changed when you had a child? Do you feel like I know a lot of people say when they have kids, all of a sudden um, they they feel like they kind of lose their nerve a little bit. I didn't. I wouldn't say I lose my nerve, but I'm definitely more emotional about mm. it when like kids are in danger. Yeah, like things that wouldn't have phased me at all before. Now I'm kind of like, oh, that's just a little tiny kid. What's he doing in the woods? Like. <laughs> Exactly. You know, Where's our parents? It, I think they offend me, right? Like, yeah. somebody help. Um, the worst parents but, in the world. What's um, happening? <laughs> right. <That's> interesting. <laughs> um, Normally, it's like whatever. Kids but, in the woods alone. Them. <laughs> well, before, yeah, <laughs> like before. Yeah, I had yeah I've gotten kids, less and whatever. less. This is all normal. Um, <laughs> I've gotten less and less tolerant of any animal stuff. I cannot deal with any animal stuff. Like if there's an oh, animal I getting killed or animal in danger, or I just, it's like, can't watch the movie. Movie's out. I don't care how short the scene is. It's terrible. It's so limiting because now that seems to be a thing to do. Kids and animal you know, yep. danger. <laughs> God. 
don't, yeah, I hope the little bats are okay in your movie. Yeah. No, yeah. But no, no, no bats are abused. Like the, the bats are very well treated. <laughs> I, see, I'm glad to hear that because I, in the so back of my mind, I'm like, the bats are going to be cute and I'm going to be on their side. And I don't care if they're killing people, but they're the good guys because they're taking revenge. <laughs> I don't want them to get hurt. <laughs> okay. so you're going to be good rooting enough. for these tampon bats. Yes, <laughs> of course. As, as soon as I hear that, as soon as I hear the pitch, I'm rooting for I them. Know, right? Of course. Well, when this oh. film comes out, we want to for sure have you on again, and we'll like talk about it. I want to see the trailers and the movie posters. I do movie posters and TV advertising, so I always love oh, seeing yeah. key art. I love the illustration for your the art you have now. I don't know who did it, but it's pretty great. That's like I'll put it up. Oh, isn't that great? I love it. <laughs> it's so good. Um, I love so that. I love seeing that, and it's like it's that I time of the month. <laughs> Uh, I had it on my Facebook author profile, and I guess like it was reported or whatever for being oh God, inappropriate people. or something. And I'm Is like, it now? There's no okay, so, so there's no new. Nope. There's nothing. There's no profanity. Like I think it. I think it's fine. It's fine. It's totally it's like fine. The, people get, you have a little bit I of don't... sense of humor about it. I mean, you know, <laughs> please, you know, it's. Anyway, it's, it, it, it works. So it's really fun. I can't wait to see it. It's yeah, really I'm very. We're, we're going to follow you. Uh, follow you. Hopefully, along. We're following this. you. Yes, we're stalking you, Dana. No, <laughs> we um, keep stalking you. But yeah, but, we'll definitely have you on awesome. again. This was super fun. I know we've taken up a lot of your time, but this was really fun. I love talking this to women fun, in the yeah. biz. It's super cool, and I, I'm rooting for you. And I can't wait to see the next thing that comes out. I'm going to go find your books. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Thank you listen. So much. We're going to say goodbye, but you don't hang up yet, okay? So hang hang loose for a second as I do this. So Mark is going to attempt the closing. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching. And this was Dana Hammer, and it was a very entertaining and interesting uh, conversation. So uh, we're signing off for now, and see you soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.